The Todd Shapiro Show. Canada Laughs, Sirius XM 168. The, the CBD stuff, it's interesting you talk about it in sport. I'm really intrigued, Lance, and we, we brought this up a few times on the show, and, and, and Jeff, you should speak to this because you're, you're a big sport guy. The CFL, it's going to be really interesting, the Canadian Football League, which is like, you know, listen, I became a bit of a fan last year, had some fun, I only made it to one game this year. I thought it was cool to bring my kid to Argo games because they're affordable to watch football and stuff. And... Now that, like, October 17th, we're going to be legal, like, I would imagine, I don't know if anyone's talked about it, like, how, because their, their drug policy, doesn't it have to allow it now if it's legal in the country that they play in? I, I, was, I was asking this exact same question to a friend of mine uh, just last week, and I, I don't know the answer to it, but I was curious because they can also just list it as a banned substance. But if the country legalizes it, that's so... But the sports, the sport community can go above and because there's already states in the U.S. where it's legal, but it's not like because if it's legal in Colorado, it doesn't mean the Denver Broncos oh, can show right. up to their drug tests and be yeah. full of THC. So, so Lance, how does that work for for big sport leagues? Like, when, you know, when when they know that this stuff is great for obviously pain, and it's great for which is something Bovid Inc. stands for very strongly, which is getting people off the opioids and stuff, and and understanding that marijuana. Has, there's a lot of studies going to that and showing that it really does cure some of these epidemics, especially what they're facing in the states with you know ODing and 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 you know like an abuse of of, of these pain meds. Meds. What like what are your thoughts and as a company and as you Lance on 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 sort of what sport league should be doing? Yeah, I you know I agree with Jeff. It's the same thing where you have these sanctioning parties that obviously have their position, um, no matter if it's AFL, NFL, you know, et cetera, NBA. And um, I, I do wish they would look at it a little bit closer because you do have players that are extreme advocates of it. We've had more players come out of what we call the green closet. We've had more players come out of the green closet in the last couple of years than the last decade as it pertains to cannabis. And so many people use it. It's one of those things that, you know, once one guy comes out, all of a sudden his buddies are coming out as well. And going, yeah, I have to admit, you know, I was utilizing CBD or a high CBD strain. Uh, to combat in some of the pain out on the field. So uh, I'm an advocate for it again because it's natural. I'm just – the opioid epidemic has gotten out of control. We've seen how that's affected people's lives, not just, you know, in the States but up there and around the world. So, you know, we do support natural solutions, and that's really what got us again into the industry was supporting it from a medical position. And obviously, you know, we're fans of the, the recreational or adult side too. So. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I think it's great. Like I, I just you see so many stories of guys who get hooked on painkillers, especially football players. Like what a brutal like, you got to go week to week. You get just demolished on a Sunday, and you got to be back at practice on Tuesday, and you got to play again the following Sunday. And it's I always think of James Wood's character in any given Sunday. Yeah, you know where he's like talking about it's you know about being God or whatever. What, what doctors' positions are. It's not about. It's like about just getting the players good. It's not about caring about them in a way. And I just don't understand where the line is because you look at opioids as painkillers, but they're just chemical, like twins of opiates. Like they're just basically heroin turned into a painkiller. Yeah. Like that's all it is. It's just a chemical equivalent of yeah. heroin. In the pill form with a number and being sold by someone in a lab coat versus someone in a, a black hoodie. Exactly. I mean, no, not to boil it down that basic, but I, I agree with you 100%. That's really what it is. And I am still surprised that it made the comeback it did after the effects that it had, you know, as far as opioids in general in the world, you know, back around Vietnam days. It's like, how, did we forget? <laughs> you know? yeah. I mean, it's just affected, affected Vietnam vets and, and the issues that they were having. Um, you know, obviously with PTSD, but also with um, addictions to heroin and such back then. So, yeah, it's a, it's a crazy, it's a touchy subject for some, but that's, that's the whole big pharma subject that does come up oftentimes in cannabis, as well as the alcohol industry, the tobacco industry. You know, we, we talk about all of it because we don't want to be compared with any, but, um, you know, there are certain similarities. Like, the, obviously, prohibition occurred in the states around alcohol, and here we're dealing with the prohibition around cannabis. So, there's the, the commonality between the two. So we can't help but bring up, you know, the two in, in conversation, obviously. So the crazy stuff. Yeah, well, I, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I, I never know what to say or not to say. But it, 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 the, the whole world really seems ass backwards when you, when you think about it. Like it's, it's, it's everything. I guess everything comes down to money and, yeah. and everything comes down to greed. 
And and I think if you know people chose to do deep dives on this kind of stuff when you talk about big pharma, I mean big pharma is just about like having a share price and not really caring about what the results or the contraindications are. Exactly. And and I don't know I don't know enough about it because I haven't read enough about it. I've only seen specials like on sixty minutes and things, but I mean, I'm sure they're hiding and, and not talking about statistics in terms of they must know this shit's fucked up, you know, essentially. <laughs> well, I also think there's probably a lab somewhere where they're trying to develop a chemical equivalent to CBD to sell. Oh, they have. To have they? Have they? Yeah, there's, there's, yeah, that's that's a crazy thing you bring up because actually just in the U.S. there's five synthetic um, cannabinoid that have been approved and are in market that people don't even know about. So here they're making up something that's a synthetic for an abundant natural resource. I mean, it's that's so yeah. ass backwards. <laughs> yeah. yet, yet federally, let's not in the state said anyway, let's not make, uh, you know, marijuana or CBD is legal yet, but to synthetic rip off of it, you yeah. know, that that's fine. Let's go with that. Why, I, why do the natural stuff? Why bother? Hi, right. Because all of a sudden you can't put a patent, it can't be proprietary, and you can't charge ten, twenty, fifty dollars a pill or something extreme that's in a you know gamma or beta form. So, I mean, it, it does. Unfortunately, I think you touched on it as as raw as it seemed, but I think you're spot on, Todd, with the fact that it does uh, oftentimes come back to financial gain and to um, political positioning. And and I see it. I mean, I've been out in Australia. There's a, a medical market that they're really trying to move forward and get off the ground down there. Um, it's a Commonwealth country, just like Canada. But I saw so much as far as similarities between the politics there and the politics in the state, as far as how much influence uh, the pharmaceutical does have on how things are done. And just the vaccinations alone they're doing in Australia with the latest parliament, it just, it's, it's bewildering. But um, again, I mean, you know, it's, <laughs> that's kind of how the world goes. And I think you're right. We're in an odd place right now. Lance uh, Lambert joins us, bovidink.com, two-way humidity control packs, uh, keeping your medical flower fresh, good for the guitar cases too. Um, I, I was sort of just thinking about this and, you know, like I'm a, I've become a big investor and, and I'm pretty big, you know, like I always think sort of like, maybe I'm not really that big, but then I get to talking to people, like I put in a significant amount of money that I, you know, control and, 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 and I'll do a lot in pot stocks and stuff and just sort of seeing where it's all going. And to be honest, I've done okay. Um, I wonder if what the, the, I'm looking for a word here, pre, 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 like the, the thing, precedent? yeah, pre, no, not precedent, the, the precipice. Yeah. Precipice. Thank you. Like to start those glasses, <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Elliott's wearing time, glasses. Buddy. He's like my teacher. The precipice will be for it to be legal federally in the States. And, and part of me just thought, I wonder if it's when big pharma somehow like dives in and, and buys out some of the bigger U.S. companies like when big if like I wonder if that's what it's going to take for big pharma to buy out someone before it's legal or, you know, and then and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, big pharma is involved. Look what they're doing. Does that make any sense, Lance? Yeah, it does. And, and that has been a concern. Again, you know, we talked about it. We discussed it last week and, you know, we're already seeing it with again with Anheuser-Busch, with uh, Miller Coors with the Celestial Group with um, latest Coca-Cola. We discussed, you know, about their um, looking into CBD as far as, you know, a, a new type of drink. And that's just on the, um, you know, the alcohol and, and mainstream beverage side. But pharmaceutical, we the industry is even more apprehensive about because we know how they operate. And, and this is me, again, kind of personal opinion more so than, than speaking on Boveda. But, I mean, just in general, there is an apprehension because that's the thing is it's, it all comes down to proprietary, you know, IP patents, things like that. And um, there are things that are going on in the industry. One, that if, if you're so inclined, uh, there's a group out of Portland, and um, it's called the Phylos Project. It's from Phylos Bioscience. And they're actually doing a really cool thing where they're mapping genetics um, for as many strains as they can come across. So let's just say hypothetically, Todd, that you're growing a strain and we're in a position where you can share those genetics or the genetic makeup with this group. Um, they actually put it in the Phylos Galaxy, as it's called on their website. And um, by that way, it's open source. So no one can come along and patent that. And that's what keeps, um, mm. any opinion is it keeps the mainstream, it keeps those big the big anything, right? The big anyone's um, out of trying to come in and swoop up and say, nope, all of a sudden we have all the patents, we have all the rights, no one can do the same part. It has to be controlled. That would be really scary. 
Um, and, and, and from what I understand, what they're realizing with, with sort of marijuana and, and the receptors that people have in individuals' DNA, that there will be certain strands that meet certain people. Like that's where sort of it's going, that you'll you'll be able to kind of know what's best for you in a way. Is that is that sort of like that's yeah. something we'll see like, you know, down the road? It is. That's that's spot on. So we all have uh, what we call endocannabinoid systems, and all mammals do. Actually, all mammals, uh, no insects, but all, all mammals have an endocannabinoid system. So when you hear of uh, people purchasing CBD dog treats for their animals, um, that's because their dogs have an endocannabinoid system. So these cannabinoids do work and interact and are not rejected by our bodies. So um, unlike, again, not to pick on mainstream, but uh, ibuprofen, uh, talking to a chemist, he explained why one can consume up to 800 milligrams of ibuprofen a day. He said it's the mere fact that our body's not designed to absorb that. So think of playing with Lincoln Logs and Legos. Well, the ibuprofen is Lincoln Logs and your um, body, essentially your system, is Legos. They don't connect, yeah. Um, not so the case. Yeah, with endocannabinoids, you're talking about Legos and Legos. Cannabinoids go into your endocannabinoid system. So he explained that 50 percent um, of ibuprofen is not even absorbed into the body. So when you consume 800 milligrams, only 400 milligrams is doing its job. The rest is flushing through. So it's, it's talking to brilliant people like that. We're learning about how much it makes a difference. And then to your point as well, um, people react different ways. So the next level of cannabis isn't going to be, hey, are you a sativa or indica guy? It's going to be kind of irrelevant, almost to the fact of, you know, I'd say 80 percent plus of the strains that you come across uh, around the world are not a pure sativa or a pure indica. There's some sort of hybrid. So that almost becomes irrelevant. It's more so what are the cannabinoids that are in that strain and what are the terpenes in that strain and how does that react to your body and what kind of end result are you looking to achieve and is that the match for it? So little geeky, but I need, I need new glasses to understand. That. <laughs> No, yeah, I don't think there's anything geeky at all about that, Lance. I think what it's doing and showing is is an appreciation for this plant. Like it's it's there's so much more than just smoking it and getting high. And and you know even when talking about it, that's why I love talking about it on the show because we're not. I mean, trust me, there's there's a part of me when you're, I, you know I wanted to joke around like, oh yeah, Legos, man, I'll build a great car. Like you know, like everyone wants to go back to those easy, obvious jokes when it comes to talking about marijuana. But at the end of the day, it's like it's sort of like this miracle plant. And when you think about how we're going to learn so much more about it now that prohibition is ending, and you know, here in Canada, really being now the precedent setting, you know, country doing it, or well, even though it's uh, legal in Uruguay, it's it's definitely much more prevalent here. And yeah. to 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 get like. That's the type of stuff that I think older people or people are still a bit have these archaic attitudes are going to want to know, like how it is. It's it's it just to get rid of the the high aspect away from it and say no, this is how it connects to your body. You, uh, Jim, seventy four year old who's getting back pain and knee pain because you're an athlete when you're younger, uh, or you, Mary, uh, who sadly is getting dementia. You know, or like you know, like and and what what this drug can do for you and connect and and I think the more we learn about it now with it being legal, I think. You know, I, I'm sort of thinking like 10, 15, 20 years down the road, and um, it, it might not even even really be known predominantly as a drug that will get that will get you high, so to speak, down down the road, which is I think yeah. an interesting thought. Yeah, that's, that is an interesting oh, thought. That yeah. just becomes the afterthought, basically. Of yeah, the plant itself. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's completely true, and that's you know we had last I checked, we had uncovered 435 cannabinoids uh, in testing here in the U.S. And I'll tell you, I had an eye-opening experience, which I knew I would, but went to uh, Tel Aviv in uh, Israel uh, earlier this year in March, and that's when Canatech was going on there. And that's the epicenter for scientific study for this industry. And to have the head of university get up there and share how they are finding strain-specific solutions for combating breast cancer, um, colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, which I know they probably just picked the top three cancers globally there, but they're showing proof on this huge wall on this projector of the cells pre-treatment post-treatment going from hundreds to dozens and, and that's exactly todd the first thing I'm, as cheesy as it might sound that's why i always reference cannabis as a miracle plant and and i don't like calling it i mean you can call the drug in theory yes um but i don't know it's it's still to me it really is the miracle plant and it holds so much more than even 
the smartest scientists, chemists, and doctors know globally. And and going on a doctor note, I was just back up in the Bay Area um, this last weekend for an event and ran into this gentleman who just you know got his doctor and he's going in to do um, uh, to do his residency. And I asked him, and I asked everyone that that spends that much money and graduates after eight years of schooling. Did you learn anything about ECS, about your endocannabinoid system and your CB1 and CB2 receptors? And he's like, you know what? He's all, there's a few books that lightly touch on it, but very lightly. He's all, it's not in the education. And that's the thing that's kind of sad is this is something that's been known about for some time, not centuries, but decades, as far as this, this system in our bodies. And the medical industry isn't quite ready. And I almost think it's a pink elephant because how many pharmaceuticals would be needed if we actually put more focus on a natural solution versus a synthetic or proprietary solution to ailments? So uh, it's, it's really it's an interesting topic. And again, you know, it takes it down a little bit of a, of a rabbit hole in conversation, but it's one that I think is, to your point, in 10 or 15 years, you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, why didn't we do this sooner? Why, why weren't we educated sooner and spent more time on this sooner, you know? Well, the, I guess the interesting thing is and we had Adam Greenblatt on here from uh, from Canopy Growth about three, four months ago. He told us about how I think that the cannabis plant was around when dinosaurs were around. Did he oh, not yeah. say that on yeah, air? Yeah, the history of it, yeah. <laughs> There's like the history of it, oh, even okay. though, by the way, I don't believe in dinosaurs, but that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> and I'm show. serious when I say that. I'm not going down that road. People think I'm a nutbag for saying it out loud, but I don't mind. I'm I'm not going to compromise myself for anybody. Anyway, Um What's interesting, though, is that it's almost as if as long as it's been around and as silly as it as it's been that I think, you know, people people ban this forever. And, you know, finally, Canada's woken up and I think the states will soon follow is that it's almost as if we needed the technology behind it to show what it's for, for people to accept it more, which is which is maybe why it's so timely, because now we with advancements in technology, we can get these this information that we might not have ever known had we just sort of, uh, you know, 30, 40 years ago, someone said, yeah, let's legalize this plant. So so maybe there's a reason why it's all taking so long. Yeah, people yeah. get that tangible proof yeah. in front of their eyes. I, that. I, I definitely agree. You're right. The technology needs to be there, the aptitude. And, and you're right, even if not believing in dinosaurs, I mean, they... they <laughs> 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 days of Cairo and the tombs in Egypt. And, and I mean, when I tell people that, you know, China was really founded on a, one of two things, but one of those being hemp, and it's still the producer of 46% of hemp uh, in this world. People are like, China? I thought Asia. I thought that drugs are bad. It was taboo. It's like, it's hemp. It's, it's in a different iteration. It's just the THC, the psychoactive is weaned out of the plant, but it's still the same plant. It's still the same parent plant. So, it's interesting how long it's been around, and, and I mean, you look even Bang, which is um, part of the Indian heritage and culture in their religion. They have Bang, which Bang is is cannabis. <laughs> it's just another term that's used on the other side of the world. But you find and start studying, looking back, and I'll send you some links, Todd. There's some fun YouTube videos. There's there's the tweet them out so we can retweet them actually, yeah, cool. like so, so we can share them yeah, with everybody. Yeah. I'll yeah. share. And then there's another link, a pretty epic link that goes all the way back to the 70s with studies as it pertains to, to your point, Todd, like you said, PTSD, dementia, um, uh, extreme pain, back ailments, I mean, all kinds of stuff. And, and that goes back, like you asked me about sports. Um, you know, even when I was younger, I competed in water skiing. I ran cross country. I did sports that were hard on my knees and ankles. And that's why I'm an advocate for CBD, because you know what? It works. And, and I've seen firsthand that it works. And um, you start looking into some of these cultures, and they've been using it for, again, for centuries. It's incredible how far back this plant really goes. So um, I'm glad we're unlocking it now. Could have been sooner, but maybe the timing's right. I think you're right. Well, Lance, I love this time with you. Uh, Lance Lambert, or Cannabis Catch-Ups from BovidaInc.com. Uh, you mentioned Twitter. I hope you do tweet these links out. I, Slow Loco? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at, at Slow Loco? 805, 805 Lance um, on Insta, and then yeah, so look on Twitter. Tell me, tell me about, tell me so, about. Have I asked you about that yet? I don't think so. Have I? What's that? <laughs> Slow loco. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, there is a there is a reason behind that. So, so. <laughs> I went to college in California, and loco is crazy in Spanish. So slow crazy is, uh, is the definition behind that. And someone's like, are you a big fan of trains? <laughs> <laughs> uh, really slow moving ones? Okay. Uh, well, listen, if you want to get rid of that and get a new one, my kid will take it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Lance, I love when you're on, man. We got to do this more often. It's it's very informative, and please share those links on Twitter. We'll make sure to retweet them from my account and the show account. Uh, and it's always nice catching up with uh, you representing the team from Bovidink.com. We uh, we appreciate it and hope to talk to you soon. Hey, thanks for having me. You guys have a good week. Cheers, man. Thanks, man. Lance, that was great stuff. That was really great Bovidink. stuff. Bovidink.com. The Todd Shapiro Show. You are the greatest hero in American history. Sirius XM, Canada Laughs. Channel 168.